everyone, you're watching Apex Insider and I'm your host, Marianne Simpson. Today we're in Kuala Lumpur at the very uncorporate feeling corporate headquarters of AirAsia and AirAsia X. All right, so Tony, thank you so much for having us here today. Pleasure, Red pleasure. Cube. What an amazing space. Well, we love it. I love it. Uh, it's an evolving process. I've caused a lot of headaches because I keep changing things. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, people are happy here. So much so that when actually when I, I told some of them we're going to move out into town, which I've Already? Generally. You just moved in. Well, we're just growing the dot-com business. Yeah. Uh, no one wanted to leave. So uh, this is far away from town. That's yet what Yeah, people want. have grown to love it. So success so far. Wicked. I feel like it really sort of um, embodies AirAsia's attitudes towards company culture mm. and brand building and the internal marketing as well as external marketing. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Wow. You really did your research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always said that branding starts at home first. Um, yeah. You know, the staff got to understand what our message is before we can sell it. And uh, it's about transparency, it's about openness, it's about democracy, it's about a flat structure. So I couldn't get everyone on one floor, so I cut a hole in the middle. Uh, <laughs> so everyone can see everybody, I right? Think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, our lounge and our food is for everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it embodies, you got it in one. Yeah, well, we've done the tour around here um, and, yeah. and it really is, amazing to see it. I had no idea what I was in for, so that was really, oh, really cool. fun. That's good to hear. Um, so on the back of this sort of ethos of, you know, putting people first, um, you've also had incredible economic success, success sorry, with the airline. Can you sort of just tell us about the journey a little bit from beginning to now? Come December, it'll be 18 years since right. I took over AirAsia. And uh, it's, you know, when I go to any airport and I, you know, I just came out from Bangkok and you know we had so many planes there and so much activity and obviously KLIA we're kind of dominant here uh, it has been an incredible story it encompasses your first point which is really people-led mm -hmm. I think if we didn't have this culture we wouldn't have had the economics mm -hmm. we wouldn't have the buy-in and the transparency to have the margins that's enabled us to grow uh, but also what's key is that breaking down all these invisible silos so we can take a lot of cost out yeah. and bring down fares. The growth has been predicated mm -hmm. on creating a market that just wasn't there before. Only 6% mm -hmm. of Malaysians flew, 3% of Thais and less than 1% of Indonesians. Mm -hmm. That has been turned upside down through uh, low fares. You've done a great job of keeping the fares low by, you know, just keeping the frills out of the way, I guess. Uh, but I think your, you know, passenger experience is still pretty good. So how would you describe the passenger yeah. experience? So I, I start off with a simple one that, um, you know, it doesn't cost anything to smile. I find some value, low cost brands, not just in aviation, yeah. almost find it gimmicky to be rude mm -hmm. um, that, you know, you don't need to give you, you any service. You, yeah. know, you go to some restaurants that are famous for treating you badly in London because yeah. they're cheap. Uh, so I always said to my staff, it doesn't cost anything to smile. We have our rules, mm -hmm. uh, people respect them, but we can be nice about it and treat yeah. everyone equally. So that's the number one ethos. And then look, you know, we invest in trying to make our seats nicer. We invest in having a good Wi-Fi product on the plane. We had great food. Our food uh, is simple yet incredibly popular that now we're opening up our own fast food restaurants downtown in KL. Are you kidding? Yeah. No way. So people take it away. They love it so much. I just thought, well, you know, we've been surrounded by American fast food brands. Why don't we try a Southeast Asian fast food brand, mm -hmm. ASEAN brand? You know, we're op opening our first one in December and we just, uh, I took a tweet of the building and the response was unbelievable. So you're right. Uh, low cost doesn't mean low quality. It's just high efficiency and taking out things that you may not have wanted uh, and giving you an option to pay for it. Awesome. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your vision for the future of the company now. It's yeah. a complete paradigm shift, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be an airline forever. Uh, I want to be more than an airline. I want to be a transport uh, mobility company that transforms into an everyday life. Uh, I take it from my staff, right? What I've provided here, you can almost live here. We have sleep pods, we have a kindergarten, we have hairdressers, Gym. we have gyms, yeah. we have basketball courts, uh, you name it, we've got it. And so uh, we, I suddenly realized that, well, AirAsia actually with some of my other companies, insurance company, mobile phone, 
actually play a large part in people's lives mm -hmm. as they've done in the workforce. So we're going for this transformation in trying to be, first of all, an, an online travel agency and then onto an everyday app and be relevant to people. Not easy, but then it wasn't easy to start an airline with no money, no experience from the music days. One of our big pluses, well, two of our big pluses, well, maybe three actually. Uh, one is kind of linked to the other is that we have a huge amount of data. Okay. We have a positive data acquisition model vis-a-vis -vis many of the tech companies that have mm. to give away promos, have to spend a fortune in acquiring customers. Right. We have 100 million people flying with us. We have 60 million unique visitors to our website mm. every month. Um, and second, we have a very strong loyalty program, which can be a currency. So uh, the third being a business that actually makes money as opposed to draining cash. But one and three are really linked together. Mm -hmm. So I was going to say, I really liked uh, the way that you are using the airline and using the airline data yeah. to acquire customers. Um, <clears throat> are there any sort of ethical questions in there when people are giving their data to no, public flights uh, that you might no, be using I mean, it to think target so. them with uh, offers uh, and things? We're, we're not targeting so much, right? Okay. Uh, we are a platform. You come onto the platform you have the option of using other things on the platform. Mm. Uh, in terms of targeting, yes, there'll be a little bit for sure. We know you're traveling uh, or you're in KL, we can give you an offer. It's all up to the consumer to say whether they want to or not, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we don't sell our databases, we never have. Okay. Um, I've never worked with a company that does that. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's something different from others. But we want to give our customers a better experience. Right. If you are you know, you are a vegetarian, why should we push uh, a meat dish to you uh, in the menu for a simple reason, right? So using data in a positive manner to give you a better experience. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I heard you speak about recently was trying to create like a social marketplace. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. was really compelling. Yeah. I love the idea of sort of encouraging people to be more entrepreneurial and removing some of the barriers for yeah. them and leveraging the cargo yeah. uh, opportunities as well. Can you talk about that a bit? So, right. My whole life has been about inclusivity, right? right. Uh, from the moment I turned up in a boarding school in England where everyone was white <laughs> and I was the only Malaysian, uh, I've always thought it's great to include everyone into to everything. So AirAsia was about including people into flying. Uh, what we've done for passengers, I feel we can do for boxers. And similarly, our culture has been an entrepreneurial culture. Uh, that's where we came from, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, one of many projects I'm doing in this digital field is to do to boxers what we did to people, allowing it not to be a complicated, mystified product. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we open up a whole new market of small companies and entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. even single entrepreneurs who are selling stuff on Instagram, who generally are only selling it in um, their own city, right. can now sell it worldwide. Mm -hmm. It's an ambitious project, but uh, I think from what my reading, social e-commerce could become bigger mm -hmm. than e-commerce, right? As, you know, it came from my mother's roots. My mother was the first kind of social e-commerce person by selling Tupperware in the party plan system, yeah. right? She'd yeah, go yeah. around, <laughs> to many homes in Malaysia selling Tupperware. Having right? parties. Parties, correct. Yeah. That's the first form of social e-commerce, mm -hmm. if you think about it. So uh, it's in my roots. Uh, we have the assets to be able to do it. We have the data. So let's try and do something for the little man, which has always been our, mm -hmm. our goal. Okay, awesome. Um, and then just going back to the connectivity part of the puzzle, if you're going to create a social marketplace like this, your most captive audience is still the passenger while they're on yeah. the plane. So if yeah. you're creating a platform to do e-commerce, I mean, mm. those are the ones who've got nothing better to do. So uh, the in-flight uh, Wi-Fi must yeah. be a big part of the, the that puzzle. That is, that yeah. is. And the speed now, I just came off a, a new KA band and I was blown away. Yeah. It was uh, nothing short of spectacular for me. Yeah. And Wi-Fi has become a big part of my life. I will always, to enhance productivity, I'll always try and find a plane with Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you have a captive audience for that one and a half hours. Uh, but I, I hope it's not just the Wi-Fi that people will, it's a great way of getting people in f eyeballs in front of it. Mm -hmm. But obviously when they come home, we hope they continue to buy on our social e-commerce platform and we continue to register people on there. Okay, and then uh, one final question. I, I asked Twitter 
uh, if anybody had a question that they would like to ask you. And Florian from Switzerland um, had a good one. And he just wanted to know, since you began Air Asia uh, to this point, have you made a business decision with regard to the airline that you wish you hadn't made or that you would do differently now? Oh, wow. <laughs> good question. Um, no, I don't think so, to be honest. Not saying I'm perfect. We've made hundreds of mistakes. Uh, but I think mistakes are part of making it better. Yeah. And uh, realizing the, the good thing about this airline is there's no ego. If we screw right. up, we stick our hands up and, and screw up. Uh, maybe my mouth. <laughs> no. Maybe I piss off politicians by speaking my mind. <laughs> and Asia wasn't ready for me 18 years ago. Some governments mm -hmm. didn't take so kindly to me. But even that, if I was off pussycat on the wall, we would have been steamrolled. We can't bake a cake without breaking a few eggs. No, that's right. All uh, right. So, so far, lots of mistakes, lots and lots of mistakes, but not one I say, oh boy, I wish I could turn back and well, that's good do that hear. again. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Tony. Pleasure. I hope you enjoy the flight to Singapore. Thank you so much. Thank you. The AirAsia story really has become a celebrated case study in agility, perseverance, and success in business. I think I speak for a lot of us when I say, I can't wait to see what happens right here in the next few years. Huge thank you, of course, to AirAsia for having us here today. Thank you as well to our sponsor, Inmarsat, for making this episode possible. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel for more great aviation content, and be sure to follow the Apex Association on social media.